Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope. Give us strength, help us cope In this world where we roam Ancient words will guide us home Ancient words ever true Changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith handed down to this age came to us through sacrifice. Oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come 
With open hearts, oh, let the ancient words impart. We have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words impart. Sing, tune my heart 
to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary, on Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. Paved the way by blood that we might wear a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down, O oh glory. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. Lord. Salvation, Lord. Lord. Salvation Lord. has been brought down from heaven. Go and show and show and show and tell the world around. Go preach it and tell it today to people in sorrow. Tell it today and tell it tomorrow. Preach the word of God that we might wear a shining crown. Go to 
Good morning, and welcome. Uh, glad to have everyone here with us today, uh, and keep on keep on coming in. Uh, that's the welcome slide, and then uh, a song. Let's let's sing a song together as we uh, get uh, get started. Uh, Jesus is Lord. Seems more than appropriate all right jesus is lord my redeemer how he loves me how i love him he is risen he is coming the lord come quick Hallelujah. I'm going to try to raise that just a little bit. That seemed maybe a little bit low. Precious is he, he that cometh. I will love him, I will serve him. When he comes with shouts of glory. I will join him, hallelujah. He still loves me, me the sinner. What a sorrow if I lost him. But he owns me, me the sinner. Praise our Jesus, hallelujah. I know some of those verses are a little bit uh, uh, new maybe to us. They sound a little bit different, but hey, this is hallelujah, the, the last verse I think we'll know. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer, how he loves me, how I love him. He is risen, he is coming, Lord, come quick. Okay, so uh, our, our title this morning, our, our lesson, that when we get to that, will be Tell Me the Story. It seems like a perfect phrase, a perfect title, and a, hopefully a good approach as we wrap up our year through the Bible, as we've done, the, as we've, uh, d done, as we've followed the uh, Look at the Book series, as we've walked through that. We've stepped through the Bible. Uh, I know it's felt like a run, a sprint, reading a book a week or uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. But as we've walked through that, now we've seen the story beginning to end. Hopefully, you've made some connections along the way. And today, I'd like to make some connections. It seems appropriate that we've ended with a couple of weeks left in December 
is the world starts to look at Jesus, well, starts to look at Christmas anyway, that we could talk about the whole story. And you'll recognize the song when we get to it later. Tell me the story of Jesus. From Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. A little further down in Genesis chapter 1. God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over the livestock and the wild animals and over the creatures that move along the ground. Let us make man after our own image. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. So God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. That's the beginning of the story. But hopefully we saw as we read, and I believe we'll see today, it it all connects beginning to end. All right, we have our uh, announcements uh, uh, in our song service, and then we'll be back here in a little bit. Concerning some of the ones that have health problems, Orlin Wentz is continuing with dialysis treatment three times a week, but he's been moved to building A, and it's room number A204. Now, Barb Richardson is here with us this morning, but she had uh, injections uh, on Friday that was extremely painful. She felt a little better yesterday and is feeling even better today, so... She's headed in the right direction anyway. Jake Mansell tested positive for COVID, and Eliza has strep throat. Jamie Ariando asks that we include her nephew in our prayers, Juan. He had COVID-19, but is having trouble recovering. And also uh, Richard Danielson, which we had heard a while back, had recovered from COVID, uh, is having arrhythmia now, so he, we need to continue to keep in our prayers also. Although we will not be having a holiday party or caroling, uh, we will be doing some other things. We'll be collecting items to put in Christmas care packages. You can bring them to Sunday service or drop them off at the building during the week of December 18th. We will be assembling approximately 30 bags. Text Tish at 308-627-6269 if you'd like to assist with delivery. Packages will be available for delivery on December 20th. And along that same lines, the teens and volunteers will be assembling the gifts on next Saturday, December 19th at 10 a.m. Also, next Saturday is the men's monthly breakfast and... uh, That starts at 8 o'clock downstairs in the fellowship hall. Okay, at this time, uh, Wes Seals will be leading us in prayer. Will you pray with me, please? Father in heaven, as we come in prayer, we are so grateful for the peace and comfort that you've given to us this morning, that we as your children can come together physically and spiritually, to learn and worship you. Father, we thank you so much for so many things. We thank you for the material things that we have in this world as we live our lives. We thank you for our family. We thank you for the family that meets in your name. And again, we especially thank you for your son, Father, for his sacrifice that gives us the ability to be in heaven with you someday. Father, I ask that you be with those this morning that are are leading this service. Uh, be with Ken as he uh, leads us in singing to you. I ask that you be with Greg as he presents your word. And be with Jerry as he leads us in remembering our Savior. 
Again, Father, we ask that we take this time to, to focus on you and to block out the world as much as possible. But let's take what we learn, Father, and go into this world as you've asked us to, to be a shining light for you. Again, we love you so much. We do make mistakes, and we ask for forgiveness. And in Jesus' in the holy name, amen. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day, without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go, no other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings and he gives them more and more. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvest golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, and true to him I'll be. Oh, how could I this friend deny when he's so true to me? Following him, I know I'm right. He watches o'er me day and night, following him by day and night. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I trust him when life's fleeting day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy. He's my friend. Following this song, uh, Alan Crawford will lead us in prayer. <coughs> I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee every hour. Stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. 
Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, may we thine indeed, Thou blessed Son. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Pray with me, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time you've given us to come and learn more about your word. We thank you, dear Lord, for the moisture we have received. And we thank you so much for the wonderful blessings that you bestow on us each and every day. And we pray we never take them for granted. Heavenly Father, please be the sick of our number. Help them back to much more health. Be with the ones with COVID that... Uh, they will be able to return soon. And please bring an end to this COVID epidemic to where we can have all of our church family back at the same time. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the wonderful sacrifice that he was willing to make and you allowed him to make. It gives us the hope of eternal life. We thank you so much for that gift. We pray that we do everything pleasing in your sight at this time. And please continue to be with us and help us with our daily walk. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well My sin, oh, 
Please raise your hand and we will get some for you. Since we've gone to this uh, new system, for some of us that have been doing this for 50 years, it's kind of a struggle to uh, open this little package and take out this uh, thing that they call bread. Uh, I would hate to have to sustain life on something like this. But we understand that these are emblems. We know that throughout history, the church has had struggles, of course, much greater than we're going through today. And I'm sure there were times when they were in caves and places where they, they didn't even have emblems to partake of. But uh, the main thing is that they did gather and they remembered Jesus. And uh, it's always been a comfort to me to read Paul's words from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we partake of them, these emblems, let us proclaim the Lord's death. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we are so very grateful that you loved us so much that you sent your son to this earth to uh, give up his life, uh, to, to die on the cross for us. Uh, it is such an overwhelming thing to even consider that uh, you would do that and that he would be willing to go through that for us. So. As we, par help, as we partake of this bread, help us proclaim his death. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus took the cup, and I'm sure if he saw this, he would think, what in the world is that? But 
as we partake of the cup, let us think of Jesus. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. and Thank you for sending Jesus. And thank you for making it so that his blood that he shed for us can cleanse us of our sins so that we can live with you eternally. As we take this cup, let us remember him. In Jesus' name, amen. concludes our communion service. Um, we do have a box at the back if, for those that uh, would like to contribute to the church. As well. Thank you. Tell me the story of Jesus Write on my heart every word Tell me the story most precious Sweetest that ever was heard Tell how the angels in chorus Sang as they welcomed his birth Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings on earth. Tell me the story of Jesus, heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Fasting alone in the desert, tell of the day that are past, how for our sins he was tempted, yet was triumphant at last. Tell of the years of his labor, tell of the sorrow he bore. He was despised and afflicted, Homeless, rejected, and poor. <coughs> Free of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him. Tell how he liveth again. Love story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper, love paid the ransom for me. Jesus, write on my heart every word, <coughs> story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard.
Greg has already said, he is with the beginning. But let us go to the end of the word that the Lord has given to us. Let's read from the 21st chapter of Revelation where it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. We slip down to the 22nd chapter of Revelation where it is also written, Then the angel showed me the river of the river of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of that city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will be no need, because the light of the lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen is right. Thank you, Bobby, for uh, helping with that reading. And Jerry, thanks for your thoughts. Good morning. Good answer. Good answer. Let's try it again, though. I don't just, uh, let's just see. So uh, we've got friends joining us online. Let make sure they can see us or hear, hear us. Hear us is what I'm going for. And uh, everybody uh, online, is, you say good morning to you. Ready? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, good. Now everybody, uh, everybody could, could hear. Tell me uh, the story is uh, our lesson title this morning. And uh, that's, uh, that's what we're going to uh, take a look at today. So um, I was um, thinking about uh, the beginning of this, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to go uh, straight to a, um, a church answer. Okay, I, I've, I've used uh, this illustration, in fact, and, and I've uh, described this before, so hopefully this will work. You know, you know what a, ch a church answer is? In Sunday school, you ask a question, and there's, there's an obvious answer. There usually is. Uh, and and uh, so one day in the little kids' class in Sunday school, think maybe uh, first grade Billy is in Sunday school class, and the Sunday school teacher is talking about how God created the world. It's where we started with our uh, morning today, Genesis 1 and that creation. The teacher is describing creation for the students and, and is going to ask a question. He says, okay, she says to first graders, uh, she said, now, uh, so what's the name of that little brown animal that runs around in your front yard, maybe has an orange fluffy tail? What do you call that animal? God created everything and brought them before Adam and Eve, and Adam named the animals. Well, what was the name of this? And, and they were kind of set a little bit quiet. And so, come on, the, the little brown animal in your front yard with the uh, orange fluffy tail. What do you call that? And little first grade Billy speaks up first, and he says, well, okay, I know it kind of sounds like a squirrel, but because we're in Sunday school, I'm going to say Jesus. Okay, good job. Well done. You, you, you laugh for that one. 
Okay, that's a church answer, right? You don't know what that is. It sounds like there's an obvious answer, but surely the answer is Jesus. Well, actually, that is the church answer that we'll look for today. So as we've read through the New Testament and the Old Testament, we've read through the entire Bible this year, and we've seen connections hopefully made. We've seen the story in the old unfold. We've seen the story in the new present, as we read in Revelation, what's coming is everything will be new again. But there's a theme that runs through this. There's a theme from beginning to end. And that church answer is very simply, Jesus, starting in the beginning and ending even at the end in Revelation. Let's, uh, let's work through some of this together. Okay, ready? I'm going to lay this over here and say, let's get to work. If only, perhaps you've had that conversation with someone or perhaps you've seen it uh, written in a book or expressed by friends in person or online. If only... We say, what is the theme of, of the Bible? And we say, we believe that from the beginning to the end, there is one message, there is one story. And somebody might say, I could get with your beliefs, if only. I could get with your Bible, if only. I could go with your Jesus, if only. And maybe you've heard the if only as... If only God had created a perfect place. Look around the world that you live in. There's so much misery and difficulty. Imagine if God had only, if only he had created a world with no sin and no sadness. Look around you. If only there was a world with no sickness and no suffering. And we think about the world, the world we live in today. If we think, if there could only be a world with no suffering, sickness, no loss, or no death. If only. And the answer is, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you the story from the beginning to the very end. From the beginning, as we read in Genesis, we read, let us, let us make mankind in our own image. And so they created man and woman, mankind they created in. Let us do the creating. John in the gospel further amplifies this and he says, in the beginning was the word Jesus and the word was with God and through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. Let us do the creating as God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit were together working this miracle out. I don't know how it worked, but he spoke and it came to be. I, I've heard it said that if there comes a time when we've got God all figured out, if we've got him figured out with straight lines and a square box and we can figure it all out, you're no longer talking about God. Does that make sense? If we can figure him all out, if we can get it, we're no longer talking about the amazing creator, God of the universe. But he said, from the beginning, let us. From the beginning, he said, everything is good. He, in fact, did create a world without sickness, without pain, without suffering. It was there. And then after what we call uh, the fall, and I'll work on this here in a little bit, but I just want to point out the consistency of from the beginning. It's all about Genesis chapter 3. After mankind rebels, we have this statement that God makes to mankind things are going to be difficult the statement that God says to the deceiver 
the Satan. You will bruise the heel of the one who's coming. The seed of woman, the one who's coming, the one that will come as a child and will be the savior of all. You'll bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. From the beginning, there was the message, even after man rebels, all the way to the end. As we've read in our reading from Revelation, we we read the water of life coming out of the throne that's making everything new. God said, John, write this down. It's true. See, I'm making everything new. This new heaven and new earth that's coming that will be again perfection. That will be again a place where there are no tears. Did you read that? Did you hear that as we read together? The tears will be wiped away at this time. And we read about the victor. The one who came into this world and indeed did crush Satan's head. Jesus is the victor, the Lamb of God. As we read through Revelation a couple, uh, two weeks ago, as we read through Revelation, we saw this reference to Jesus, the Lamb, the one who is slain on the throne, but the one victorious. We get this image from beginning to end. Jesus is there, a part of God's plan. Make no mistake, in the very beginning, God saw all that he had made, and he said, it's very good. That's what he made for mankind. That's what he made for us. Uh, On the front of your bulletin, if you if you'd like to follow, there's a brief outline. And you, and you can pencil in some of these added thoughts if you'd like. From the beginning, God wanted to be with us. He created mankind at the very end, at the top, at the pinnacle, the ultimate of creation. To be his image. He didn't say about the oak tree, this will be my image. He didn't say about any other creature or created one. Instead, at the very end, he said, let us make man in our image. God wanted the image bearers, that's us, to rule and to reign in this world, to represent him and to be with him. We read about God walking in the garden, God being with Adam and Eve. As we tell the story, if we think about how to tell the story, If only, if only there wasn't pain and suffering and sickness and sadness and sorrow. If only. Why did God create evil? Have you had that question? Perhaps that might even stump some. Why why did God create? God created beauty and perfection God is a God of love and the God of justice and a God of mercy. And from the beginning, God created good. It is mankind that chose to rebel. Sometimes we use the word the fall. In the first couple chapters of Genesis, we read about God building his perfect creation. And then we say the fall. But it's not just tripping over something or falling off the edge of a cliff. It is rebellion. And by the way, it might sound familiar to you if you look in the mirror and look at your life and take just a moment. Rebellion. It's with us. It is mankind. It is the cause of evil in this world. Again, as we read through, we saw in the New Testament reference that Jesus came into this world to save the world, not to condemn the world. Mankind stands condemned already because we've rebelled against God. We we choose that. We chose that route. Rebellion, mankind chose. Rebellion, mankind chose to go away from God's plan. God's perfect plan. If only. 
God created good and when man chose the absence of good, when Satan tempted with the absence of good, we see a rejection of God's good and we see evil. Tell me the story. God, second part of that. How did that happen? Surely God saw that that was coming. Surely God saw that. Yeah. God saw that you would rebel. God saw that Adam and Eve would rebel. God saw that we would rebel. Why? He, he didn't want robots. Think about that sentence. God didn't want robots. He didn't want to push a button and have all of mankind do one thing all at one time. He didn't want to instruct everyone separately to be robots doing different things, but never have the ability to turn away. Do you get that? The, we can say robots today. Philosophers throughout time have said uh, automatons, someone that have one automatic motion. Oh, we can think of robots today. It has one job. It has a job that has been programmed or put into it. You can think about that and wonder, how does that work? In fact, when they're building and testing, you know what, when it makes a mistake, whose fault is it? The author of the written instructions, right? Because that robot has no choice. It can only do one thing. But God wanted you to choose to love him. He made you as his image bearer to carry his image out into this world. But to do that as a choice, you have a choice. That one that has a choice to love you is the one that really loves you. That one who has a choice to love you can reject you. God did know. And God did understand that there would be rebellion in this world. In fact, as we look at this and we see this notion of creation and fall, which is really rebellion, right? And, and God's plan we can read about Israel in the Old Testament, redemption ultimately in Jesus, the coming part of the story. But we can see, well, God, why did you do it this way? Or why did you do it that way? I want you to stop and think. We might say, God, why did you allow evil to come from mankind's rebellion? That's not the question. The question is not why all of these uh, difficult consequences? Why was mankind barred from God's perfect garden? Why, why was there difficulty in work? Why is there pain in childbearing? As we read that, which God declares after man's rebellion. Why? But the question is not, why all those things? I don't understand those things. The question is, why didn't God just wipe them out for their rebellion? Do you get that? Do we get that? The question isn't, why does God ask me to do this thing? To follow him, to obey him, to love him, to serve, to love others. Why? The question is, well, God, why do you want me to love so-and-so? He is unlovely. He is unlovable. God, why do you want that? The question is not, God, why do you want that? God, why don't you just wipe me out every time I rebel? As we read through this story, Paul, the apostle, writes what we all understand. We intuitively know, right? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Paul writes in Romans. The question isn't, why this, God? The question is why didn't he just, as kings, would wipe out a rebellion in human terms? Why didn't the king of kings just wipe out 
our rebellion. Instead, he turned the first rebellion into a way for people to live for him. And then he offered another opportunity. We read as we walked through the Old Testament, we read about Israel, God's chosen people. We read about uh, God's development with them, God's coaching them and bringing them along, giving them instructions. The Ten Commandments we know part of a greater set of instructions on how to live and how to survive in this world. What about all those sacrifices? You might have read through that. Maybe at any point you've read through the Old Testament, you think, oh, yuck, ugh, how, what's with all of those sacrifices? I don't get it. You know, pointing to the cost of grace. You see, from the beginning, the sovereign could wipe out the subjects, but by not doing it, that's grace. Paul writes, again, in the New Testament, Paul describes this as the, the schoolmaster. Israel has been given the instructions from God, the schoolmaster that brought them to better know God and connect to him. And to understand, Paul says, what sin is. Again, we come to this and we come to God's dealing with Israel and God's dealing with us. And again, the question is not, God, why all the sacrifice? Why all that blood? Why all of that cost, expensive cost to illustrate the cost of sin? The question is not why that. The question is, why didn't this sovereign summarily execute all who rebel? Why? The problem is rebellion from the beginning through Israel, through our time. The problem is always rebellion. The story, though, from beginning to end is that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one who has the solution to mankind's problem. Jesus, John says, he came to save, not to condemn, right? That's easy to remember. John 3, 16, it's one that people often say, oh, I know this, it's a memory verse. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he sent his son, right? But don't forget the rest of that is for God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. John writes in his gospel, what? What about that sacrifice, those sacrifices of old? And what about that sacrifice of Jesus for us? The problem is rebellion. And we need something to pay the price. The problem is we've turned away from the king of kings. There's only one way. There's only one price that could be paid. You see, the sovereign would summarily execute the rebellious. But that wouldn't have changed mankind. Instead, he took the place. He paid the price. All have sinned. All have the opportunity to accept the price that's been paid. From Genesis 1 through Revelation 22, we find the thread of grace from the beginning and grace to the end. And Jesus is the instrument of that grace. Do we get that? Jesus is the instrument of that grace. The word in creation and the lamb on the throne at the very end in Revelation. If only, if only God had created perfection and, and not suffering and sacrifice and, and suffering and sadness. If only God had created 
He did. Mankind rebelled. Redemption is required, so he sent Jesus. And in the end, once again, he's bringing perfection. Paul says, the words that we quote, all have sinned. In Acts 2, we read, when people saw that they had sinned, they said, what do we do? And Peter's answer at that time was, repent and be baptized, every one of you. And receive that gift of salvation and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the example. Jesus is the perfect Israelite. And Jesus is the only possible Savior. The story we can tell, we can tell in a few short minutes, the whole story. Jesus is in the beginning. And Jesus is in the end. And Jesus represents your opportunity for salvation at this time and at any time. In fact, we offer an invitation uh, as we come to the end of our service on Sunday mornings. And we say, if you need to turn to Jesus, if you need to set things right and accept that sacrifice that he paid for you, we'd love to help you with that. We have the waters of baptism always ready to go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to stand together and sing the next song. And if you need, you're invited to come in our, uh, at that time. Let's sing. Hark the gentle voice of Jesus falling tenderly upon your ear. Sweetish cry of love and pity falleth turn and listen stay and hear ye that labor and are heavy laden lean upon your dear lord's breast ye that labor and are heavy laden come and die will give you then his loving, tender voice, obeying, bear his yoke, his burden take. Find the yoke, his hand is on you laying, light and easy for his sake. Ye that labor and are heavy laden lean upon your dear Lord's breast. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. And David Hogan's will lead us in a closing prayer. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you once again for this beautiful day you've given us. We thank you again for the moisture that we've so badly needed and you've seen fit to send it to us. Dear God, we, we pray especially for all those who are uh, sick and hurting that if it be your will that they can get back to a measure of health that they so desire. Dear God, we, we thank you for everyone who's chosen to be here today, and we pray that we've made you happy with our worship service, but most of all, we pray that in, in your wisdom, you've asked us to, to gather and worship you, but it's, it's for our own benefit. We know when we're not here, we aren't as strong. Dear God, we, we thank you for this past year that we've spent studying your word. We think of the hundreds of times in the Bible that it says to not live in fear, to be not, do not be afraid. 
because in the end we know that you will be victorious. We thank you especially for this time of the year that, that we call the Christmas season. Help us to remember that even though Jesus came and was born as a baby, as a mortal man, <clears throat> he was here from the beginning and he will be here at the end. Dear God, we know that you've told us that if we choose to believe you, that we have the hope of eternal salvation where there is no fear, there are no tears, no death, just happiness to be with you for eternity in heaven. Dear God, we thank you again for all the leaders of this great country that you've given us. We pray for the leaders of this church that they can truly look to you for guidance. Dear God, give us courage and strength to choose to follow you, to do the things that are right, to love one another as you have first loved us. Dear God, we pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Church Online. Anyway, the whole sermon was pretty much what we did today. Really? It was great. Well, good. We even talked about robots. <laughs> no kidding. The cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power, revealing how he made the lame to walk again and calls the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. I then obeyed his blessed commands and gained the victory. Oh, victory! Jesus, my Savior forever, he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit. 
Spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that it's the presence of the Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. On bended knee I come, with a humble heart I come, bowing down. I pledge my love anew. I worship you in spirit. I worship you in truth. Make my life a holy praise unto Show your mercy and your grace. Change my life, O oh Holy Spirit. Make me fresh and ever new. Make my life a holy sacrifice to you. Walking in sunlight all of my journey Over the mountains, through the deep vale Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee Promise divine that never can fail Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight Flooding my soul with glory divine Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and guide. He is the light, in Him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above. Singing His praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine.
There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day, that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain. No more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day, that will be. What a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day, that will be. Gone is all my debt of sin, a great change is brought within, and to live I now begin, risen from the fall. Yet the debt I did not pay, someone died for me one day, sweeping all the debt away, Jesus paid it. Jesus died and paid it all, yes, on the, the cross of Calvary. Calvary. And my, my stormy was heart was melted at his dying, dying call. Oh, his, his heart, heart in shame was broken on the, the tree for you and me. And me. Yes, and, and the, the death of his death is canceled. Jesus has paid it, paid it all. Oh, I hope to please him now. Light of joy is on my brow. As at his dear feet I bow, safe within his love. Making his the dead I hold, freedom true he has bestowed. So I'm singing on the road to my home above. Jesus, Jesus died and paid it all, yes, on the, the cross of Calvary. Calvary. And my, my stormy was heart was melted at his dying, dying call. Oh, his, his heart in shame was broken. On the, the tree for you and me, me. yes, and, and the, the death is death is canceled. Jesus has paid it, paid it all. Sinner, not for me alone did the Son of God atone. Your debt to He made His own on the cruel tree. Come to him with all your sin, be as white as snow within. Full salvation you may win, and rejoice.
rejoice with me. Jesus died and paid it all, yes, on the cross of Calvary. And my stormy heart was melted at his dying, dying call. Oh, his heart in shame was broken on the tree for you and me, yes. And the death is cancelled. Jesus has paid it, paid it all. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond, where the saved of earth shall soon their glory share. Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there. Over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praises to the never ending praises. Everybody will be happy over there. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers will be singing round the throne in that land where no one ever knows a care. And the Christians of all ages will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody, Everybody will be happy will over there. Be over happy there. Happy we'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praises to the never in his praises. Everybody will be happy over there. We will hear nobody praying and no mourning in that land, for no burdens there will be for us to bear. All the people will be singing glory, glory to the Lamb. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody, Everybody will be happy over there, over there. We'll be happy over there. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praises to the never ending praises. Everybody will be happy over there. There we'll meet the one who saved us and who kept us by his grace and who brought us to that land so bright and fair. We will praise his name forever as we look upon his face. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody, Everybody will be happy will over there. Be over happy there. Happy we'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praises to the never-ending praises. Everybody will be happy over there. King of my life, I crown me now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou wast laid, tenderly mourned and wept. Angels in robes of light arrayed, guarded thee whilst thou slept. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony. Lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Let me, like Mary, through the gloom, come with a gift to thee. Show to me now the empty tomb, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, Lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. May I be willing, Lord, to bear daily my cross for thee, even thy cup of grief to share, 
thou hast for all for me. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. I have heard of a land on the far away strand. Tis a beautiful home of the soul. Built by Jesus on high, where we never shall die. Tis a land where we never shall be in the sweet by and by. Happy praise to the King through eternity sing. Tis a land where we never shall die. Never our troubles and trials are o'er. All our sorrow will end, and our voices will blend with the loved ones who've gone on before. Never So my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit desire and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than any you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire. 
desire and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my 